Hello, and welcome to the SAS version of testing the assumptions of that one-way analysis of variance. Now remember that the two assumptions are the normality assumption and the homoscedasticity assumption. Now specifically what that normality assumption means is that the data in each group come from a normally distributed population. A similar assumption that we're actually going to be testing is that the residuals, all of the residuals together, come from a normally distributed population. Now the two statements are not equivalent, but they are very similar. And it will be rare that you will get substantive differences between the two uh, statements. We're going to use the Shapiro-Wilk test to test normality. The second assumption is the assumption of homoscedasticity. That is that the variances, the population variances in each of the groups is equal. We're going to use the Levine test to test that. So be very clear what we need to test. For the normality test, we're testing the normality of the residuals. That is that the residuals come from a normally distributed population. For the homoscedasticity, we're testing if the variances of each of the populations are equal. So let's pop into SAS. SAS 9.4. I'm going to try to make things a little bit bigger. OK, that should be working. That should make things a little bit bigger. I'm not sure how to make the log text bigger, but we got the editor text going to be bigger. So we're going to paste in where we ended up last time, part of where we ended up. Here's the data. I changed the data set name to meet because it's always good to name your data set something meaningful in comparison to, to what you're studying. Here, since we're studying the bacteria in meat, we could have called the data set bacteria or meat, and I decided meat because it's shorter. So data ended in a semicolon, then the input line package, and I'm calling this L count to ju just to remind me that this is the log count. Ending it with the at at, then data lines, remember semicolons are important in SAS. And then at the end of the data, another semicolon, but no semicolons here, because that semicolon tells SAS that we're done reading in the data. Now, one thing we didn't do last time, and it's what we're going to do this time, is actually look at the data set itself. And by look at the data set, I mean we're going to run some um, uh, univariate statistics on it. And the f function we're going to, or the process, or the proc that we're going to use here is the proc univariate. Uni means one, variate means variable. So what SAS is going to do is go through every individual variable in the meet data set and give us some summary statistics, like the means, the medians, the standard deviations, the variances, the ranges, etc. And because I specified normal, it's going to give us normality tests for each of those variables in the data set. Well, which variables are in the data set? Package and L count. Now, granted, doesn't make sense to do univariate statistics on package because at this point, SAS thinks package is just the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 repeated over and over. So let's throw a quit in there. Spell quit correctly. And now we'll go ahead and submit this. A lot of output. SAS is famous. Little typing gives us a lot of output. So this is going to be variable package. We're going to skip that because it's meaningless. But we are going to go to the variable L count. We get sample size, the mean, the standard deviation, skewness, coefficient of variation. Some other the mean, the median again mentioned, standard deviation, variance, range, IQR. We even get a test for mu equal to zero. T-test. There's a test statistic. There's a p-value. p-value is much less than 0. Therefore, we conclude that the average log count of bacteria is not 0. That's not really meaningful for this problem, just explaining what the table gives. Here's the test for normality. You got the Shapiro-Wilk, the of schmirnov the Kramer von Mises, and the Anderson-Darling. Again, we're going to focus on the Shapiro-Wilk. The test statistic is 0.8785, 2.9. The p-value is 0.0839. 
p value is greater than alpha, therefore we fail to reject the null hypothesis as always. The null hypothesis for the Shapiro-Wilk test and for the other three is that the data come from a normally distributed population. Since the p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject that. But wait a minute. Hold, the, hold, hold on. It's that the data, the, the, the null hypothesis here is that the data, meaning the L-count variable as a whole, comes from a normally distributed population. That is not an assumption of the analysis of variance procedure. The assumption of the analysis of variance procedure is that the residuals, that is what's left over after the model explains a lot, the residuals come from a normally distributed population, not the variable itself. So these tests for normality don't help us whatsoever. They're testing something we don't care about. So beware, be, be very much aware of what you're testing. Here, this was a normality test for the L count variable, which we don't care about. But we got the quantiles, extreme observations, etc. So what do we care about? We care about testing the normality of the residuals. So how do we do that? Well, let's go back to our PROC GLM that we had. So PROC GLM, data is equal to meet. We specified the class was package. That was our independent variable. That's our grouping variable. Then we specified what the model was. L count is equal to package. We'll run that. And we get some familiar output. GLM procedure package has four levels and now SAS knows that the package is the categorical variable because we specified class and then package. Number of observations 12. Here's the ANOVA table. Degrees of freedom for the model which we here call DFB or uh, degrees of freedom between is 3. It's the number of groups minus 1. There's the SSB there's a mean squared b error, which we called mean uh, we called within df within or df error is just n capital n the number of data points minus the number of groups, 12 minus 4. There's the sum of squares error, the mean squared error again, sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom gives you the mean squared. F value is the ratio of the mean squared model to the mean squared error. We got that p-value of less than alpha, therefore we know at least one of the average log count bacteria is not the same. Here's the box plot, and that's where we ended up last time. Now, we want the residuals, because we want to do that normality test on the residuals. So how do we do that? Well, back here in the PROC GLM, we will add the output statement. What are we going to output? We're going to output a new data set. We're going to call it meet out. Meet be, and I use meet out because meet is the original data set and out is something that was outputted by the analysis on the meet data set. Well, what do we actually want to output? We want to output the residuals. So I'm going to call the residuals R. So what that statement will do is it will create a brand new data set called meet out and it's going to have a variable in there called r and that r is going to actually be the residuals from our model up here from that model. Now just to double check let's run that or submit it make sure there's no errors I don't need to see that I do need to see the output or the log I don't see any errors so we're good to go. That means there should be a data set called meet out. And if there is a data set called meet out, we can go ahead and do proc univariate on it. Aha! 
Now we know why I introduced proc univariate. Proc univariate state that the data is going to be meet out. And we want, amongst other things, we want the normality tests. Let's run that. So here we go. Let's go. Try to find out where we are. There we go. Univariate procedure on the variable residual. There's 10 of them. The average of the residuals is 0, like it has to be. Standard deviation, skewness, under basic stuff. We know that the average is going to be 0, so we don't really care about t-tests. Here we are at the important part, the test for normality. Shapiro bulk test. Test statistic is 0.894214. The important value is the p-value. This is the p-value that the variable, the residuals in this case, comes from a normal distribution. Because the p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject that null hypothesis. Therefore, the long and short of this is that the assumption of normality is not violated by this data. Because this p-value is greater than alpha, the assumption of normality is not violated. So it passes. Well, it passes this assumption. I'm going to clear those because it's getting too long. So we ran proc GLM. We outputted a brand new data set of the residuals. We call that residual variable residual. We ran it. The variate specified data was going to be meet out, the same as this data set, and normal gave us the normal tests, amongst others, the Shapiro-Wilk test, for this variable residual. So test one, done. Test two is the test of equal variances. That can actually be done back here in the PROC GLM. First thing we have to do is specify that we want means. Hopefully I haven't. Okay, this will be interesting. First thing we have to do is specify we want to use the means statement. Okay, I'm back to being able to use this. Means means statement. Then we specify the grouping variable. Grouping variables package. And then we use some options. Or actually, we only have one option we're going to use. Options will follow the slash. So that is a forward slash. And we want to use a HOV test. HOV is for homogeneity of variance. And the Hoff test that we want to use is the Veen test. So means is a new statement. Package is the grouping variable. That's a forward slash. After the forward slash, we give it some options. In this case, there's only one option we want. We want the Hoff test. HOV is for homogeneity of variances. The Hoff test that we want is the Levine test. So let's run this now. Again, I can either click on the running dude or F8 on my computer keyboard. So here we are. Let's, let's jump right to the GLM. So take us to the top of the GLM procedure. Classes, there's four levels. Those are the values, 12 data points. There's our model results. Already talked about those. There's the box plot. Here's the new part. Levine's test for homogeneity of variance for the L count. The only thing here that is really, really important to see is that p-value. 
p-value is 0.3757. Since the p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Repeat after me. Because p is greater than alpha, you're not repeating after me. Come on, repeat after me. Because p is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Very good. The null hypothesis here is that the variances are equal, that the variances are homogeneous. Homogeneous is just a fancy word for the same. Homo for same, geneity for birth. So homogeneity is actually they come from the same part. So short version, p greater than alpha passes this test as well. So we passed the assumption of homo scedasticity. Then from the shapiro bulk test, we, it passes the assumption of normality. So it passes both of those assumptions. That means that the analysis of variance procedure that we have is appropriate. That was it. If it had violated any of those assumptions, then we would have to do something different than this analysis of variance procedure. Usually, and, and the book goes into some options for you, but usually what's done is that you will transform your dependent variable, which is exactly why we're using log count here instead of count. Because originally, if we had done this with the count of bacteria, we would have violated the assumption of normality at this point. So we would then take the log of the bacterial count and start from scratch. Just that we jump to that second part with this data. So that's it. So let's go ahead and go back to the editor. Make this a little bit bigger. Make this really bigger. There we go. So there's our process. Again, this is from last time. Imported the data. I introduced the PROC univariate. You got it back in 5013, I'm sure. but refresh your memory on that. This part was the ANOVA from last video. I showed you how to output new data set, a variable in a new data set, and run that normality test on that new variable. And then I showed you how to do the homogeneity of variances test. And that's it. That's the end of today's SAS Extra. Hopefully this was helpful. Take care of yourself.